Welcome to another Sax Cat Sierra Retrospective. And in this episode, we're going to look at King's Quest V and why that King's Quest V has so many game-breaking inventory items. That's right, King's Quest V, very good game, lots of moon logic, and a lot of inventory items that if you kind of, you know, just don't pick them up, uh, makes the game unwinnable. So today we are going to look at my top five game-breaking inventory items of King's Quest V. Number five, the Cobbler's Hammer. So, this one is pretty easy to miss, because if you don't go talk to the old lady and the old man about the shoes, you won't really know what to do with the little set of shoes that you get from the elf, uh, which will actually end up being in another uh, one of our inventory items a little bit later on. <laughs> so you, you know, you go get this hammer. Um, if you don't get it, <laughs> bad things happen. Okay, and it also depends on when you go get it. Um, once you have saved the mouse from the cat, it will free you from the Swarthy Hog Inn guys when they knock you out and tie you up. But if you don't have the hammer, there's a lock on the inside uh, of the room you're locked in. So you cannot break out, and that's it. Game over. So if you saved when you're in there, the game's done. You have to start over, or at least back to a save before that point. And this comes back into play later. This hammer is not used just once. It's used twice. Um, it's used to get a piece of crystal in the Yeti cave. If you decide to not go in there like me as a kid, or I went in there and just looked around and was like, wow, this is really pretty, and then left, and you cannot come back. Okay, this is a place that you can't come back to. So if you don't have the hammer, it doesn't matter. You can't do this. Um... This leads to you not being able to beat the game, but you won't know until you're almost at the end. I almost put the crystal on this list because of that, but I thought since you had to have the hammer to get the crystal, I thought that it would be a better uh, inventory item to put on the list. So literally, at this point, you know, you're doing pretty good, da -da -da. You, you, you're getting all the way through the game, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, you've beaten a few other game-breaking bugs, and not next thing you know, you get to the Twin Lizards, you didn't knock off that crystal with the hammer, and you can't go any farther. Uh, as a child, I did that, and I was using one save like an idiot. And then the next thing I knew, I had to go all the way back to the beginning of the game because I hadn't used the hammer. So, number five on our list of game-breaking inventory items is the cobbler's hammer. Number four, the honeycomb. Okay, this little piece of shit. Okay you might just decide to not pick it up. Uh, in my last playthrough of King's Quest V, uh, the NES version that we did, I had to go back and redo some things because uh, the way the game works, it sucks, okay? The NES version is a pile of garbage. So I neglected to actually click on the beehive to get the honeycomb, which you can do that because you would probably expect when you save the bees from the bear that they just give you the honeycomb. Well, if you don't look in your inventory, Okay, it's not there. You have to actually pick it up. Also, you may just have not saved the bees. Okay, you might not have known to do that. Might not have even gone to that screen, to be honest. So you don't have the honeycomb. And you get into the witch's wonderful forest. <clears throat> the forest has several ways that you can get screwed. Two of them are on this list. One of them's not. Not having the genie bottles not on this list. That could be a problem, too, because you can't get rid of the witch. But, um, I put a different one on there just because of frustrations as a child. Um, so you don't have the honeycomb, and you've stopped the witch, you've got everything you need, but you can't leave. You cannot leave the witch's place. It is impossible to get out unless you smear honeycomb on the ground and get the honey out of it and stick it on the ground and then throw three gems on the ground. And when you do that, the little elf will come out, and then the third time he gets stuck in the honey, and you can grab him and he helps you get out of the forest. So number four on our list of game-breaking inventory items was the honeycomb. Number three, the custard pie. So this one is completely missable. You don't have to get it, 
there's no reason really to get it that you could think of. It's like, well, it's just a pie. Maybe I might need to save my, you know, one silver piece if you even manage to find the silver piece. Because you have to actually go into one of the buildings into the town for the guy to leave and then magically there's a coin there to pick up. Okay, and you might want to save it. You might think you need to find several silver coins to equal a gold coin to see Madame Mushka. Uh, several people have thought that in the past, kind of like in Quest for Glory where 10 silvers was one gold. So you might want to be holding on to it and not get that pie. Or you might just accidentally eat the pie because you can literally click on it and eat it. Okay, uh, when you get into the mountains, you get hungry and you will die of starvation. So if you didn't pick up the mutton chop, you'll just eat the pie and it'll let you live. That's the same thing as eating part of the mutton chop. But if you eat the custard pie... You can't beat the Yeti. And first off, why in the world does that beat the Yeti in the first place? I find that hilariously terrible. You know, as a kid, guess what? I guess that on the first try that that's what you should use on him because of slapstick stupidness. But still, if you eat the custard pie at any point before that part of the game, you can't go any farther. And you're stuck because Grey Wolf and them have you trapped. You cannot go back. So, if you didn't get it, it's too late. You're screwed. That's the main reason it's on this list. You cannot go back and get it once you go past the first few screens. Uh, basically, from the point when you use the sled to go down the hill, you can no longer uh, go back. See, like that's why the sled's not on there, because you need it to progress, but you can still go back and get it at that point, I do believe. I've never actually not had it, so I'm not real sure about that. But still, the custard pie is just on here for pure silliness alone, that literally you need a custard pie to beat the game. But there is another food item on here, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. The number two game-breaking inventory item is the pendant. You can completely miss the pendant, because you can go into the forest without it, and basically what happens, if you enter the forest, you're stuck in the forest. We've already discussed this with the honeycomb. Okay, and if you get stuck in there... The witch is eventually going to find you and turn you into a frog. And if you don't have the pendant, you're screwed. You're done. Okay, you cannot... Oh, the cat's being cute. Sorry, I had to look down at that. If you have the pendant with you, even, and don't put it on, she still kills you. But if you don't have that pendant and you go into the forest, the game is over. You cannot beat it. Okay, if you save in there, you can't go back. And that breaks the game. You have to start over. And that used to burn me up as a kid because I would... I would go in there early, thinking once I had the genie bottle and stuff, I kind of would go in there. I was like, I can beat it now. Nope, you can't. <laughs> Still have to have that pendant from Madame Mushka. So if you don't have a gold coin from the desert, you can't get the pendant. Okay, so lots of issues with that. So the pendant basically is a must to beat the game. If you don't have the pendant, you cannot get out of the forest. Same thing if you don't have the honeycomb. Both of those things are needed to get out. And if you don't have them, you can't get out ridiculous but our number one most annoying game-breaking inventory item in King's Quest 5 is the moldy cheese so you've you've managed to get through the whole game you're at the very end and you need to fix the wand okay now what happens in this is you are supposed to get captured one time okay so you can go into the dungeon use the fish hook on the moldy cheese and get cheese and you won't even have any idea what cheese would be used for at this point. Well, the cheese is a magical MacGuffin in this case, that you drop it into Mordak's little wand machine, and the next thing you know, it repowers your wand and takes the power out of his wand. So if you don't get the cheese, you cannot do that, and there is no way to activate it. So basically, you just wander around the castle with no way to finish the game, because you don't have the cheese. So you could literally be 10 minutes from beating the game, forget to get the cheese, and you can only go there once and get out. She only will help you one time, the princess. So if you go in there once and don't get it, then any other time, it's a game over. So literally, you cannot beat the game. You are all the way at the end, and you cannot beat it. And let me tell you, first time I played this, didn't get it. And it does give you a pretty big hint that you should look in there, because it has a little rat go into it as a hint. But... I didn't get the hint, and I know many people that haven't. 
So, yeah, our worst game-breaking inventory item is literally a piece of cheese. <laughs> so, bleh. So this has been Sax Cat 20 and as always, I hope you've enjoyed this list and my new series on Sierra, you know, retrospectives. So we're going to be calling this SSR with Sax Cat's Sierra Retrospectives. Please like and comment and share the video around. I would love to make this a new series. I might add Disco Bob if it ends up doing well. Uh, the first one did well. It's only been up for two days and it's pushed to 250 uh, without me doing any type of advertisement or stuff like that. So very happy with it so far. So once again, SaxCat20 with SaxCat Sierra Gaming Retrospectives. Stay tuned for the next top five or maybe just another retrospective on why one of the games might not be good, like Mask of Eternity, or why a game might be great, like um, the Laura Bow series. So stay tuned, and as always, thanks for watching.